All right, how's it going, y'all? So something has happened that I did not think was going to happen. Synology has completely gone back on the DSM drive restriction. 2025 models are going to be able to build storage pools with any hard drives again in DSM 7.3. Synology sent me over this press releaser and I am really surprised that they did it. And I think it really shows that their consumer base was way larger than they really thought it was. I think they took a gamble and really thought that they were going to be able to pull a lot more people over, but because of how competitive this market is, they simply were not able to. And they actually went back and coming in DSM 7.3, which should be out probably by the time you see this, if not maybe tomorrow, I don't have a full update on that. 2025 models and beyond are going to be able to build storage pools with whatever hard drives you want. The only last restriction is the fact that we are still going to have that NVMe drive restriction that we've had since, well, pretty much NVMe volumes were an option. That's not great, but not nearly as big of a deal. And even better, they are not going to show as warning. I reached out to Synology directly about this, and apparently when you bring over these drives, you are not going to get that warning light that you got on previous versions of the XS models that would have the warning. I'm not sure what'll happen with the XS unit and those other ones that did have the earlier drive compatibility list that would show the warning. But for all the 25 models that have been released so far, which none of them would have been in that drive restriction anyway, you are going to be able to put whatever hard drives you want in there. There is still that caveat that's been in there since I think DSM 6.2 where there is going to be a incompatible list. And Synology has used this in the past for very, very, very few drives. I've seen maybe four or five drives on it in the past, and these are drives that have known compatibility issues. And for drives on this compatibility list, sorry, this incompatibility list, you are still not going to be able to build a volume. I don't think Synology is going to overextend that, but in theory they could to larger and larger drives and things like that. We are really going to have to wait and see what that incompatibility list is. And I know so many people have been waiting this. So many people have really been looking at other NAS manufacturers because of these restrictions. And especially for people who wanted to build really big NASs and kind of tinker themselves, Synology was really hard to recommend if you were not buying it for the great software. But now, you really have that ability to still have that phenomenal software and bring in your 24 or even the 28 terabyte drives. These all should work according to this press release and according to my emails with Synology. You should be able to plug in those 28 terabyte drives. I'm still gonna have to test it, but you'll actually be able to build those massive volumes all off of these third party drives. So the way Synology is framing this, and it's really hard to understand because of the actual kind of how it's set up. But the way Synology is currently framing this is kind of saying, hey, our intent the entire time was to get these drives on a compatibility list. They are kind of saying in this that they were really trying to get third-party drive manufacturers to spend some time testing their own drives and making sure they were compatible. And they were kind of saying, hey, we're going to kind of force their hands by making this compatibility list and trying to offload the responsibility of drive validation to the manufacturer of drives who actually have all the firmwares and everything and that way Synology didn't have to do that. And from talking to Synology's PR team in the past, they did say that. They did say that they were really wanting third-party drives to be on that compatibility list and they were really trying to get third-party drive manufacturers to just spend some time running through and validating their units, which I have not really seen at all. And in this press release, they're saying, hey, we still really want drive manufacturers to do that. We're trying to accelerate it. They are now opening it up to anyone. And I think this is especially useful because I don't think they were going to ever validate your 24 and your 28 terabyte drives just because it made a very interesting proposition because they had to acknowledge the fact that their drives were not big enough in doing so. So now they're fully opening this up. And I, I really think this shows that the consumer base is a lot stronger and a lot more important to Synology than maybe they even thought they were. We've talked about in the past how Synology really was reorienting themselves with this decision and other decisions that have been made recently on kind of getting out of the consumer market and instead just focusing on people with 
a lot of money or people who have like kind of businesses. And larger businesses who are really focused on critical infrastructure don't really bat an eye at first party ODM drives. They just don't care as much because it's all part of that, hey, one point of contact, everything gets fixed through them. But I think this really shows that the consumer market is still really critical to Synology. And I really hope Synology sees this as a lesson, sees that one, the consumer market is a huge portion of their business. I don't think they're ever going to be able to get away from that. Enterprise is great money, but they're not there yet. And honestly, the consumer market is how a lot of these bigger businesses are starting to use the Synologies because I've had so many times where the IT guy at a company who's way high up has a NAS at home, they really like Synology, they know it works great, and they deploy it for their business because it's so easy. And having that drive requirement really cut out that. I really am glad Synology finally saw the light of this. I did not think it was gonna happen. I would love to see the backend data that actually occurred this to happen and be in those boardroom decisions when they did this. But coming tomorrow, you should be able to install whatever drives you want on your system as long as you first update DSM 7.3. This also leaves a very funny point where I imagine out of the box NASAs are still probably going to be running 7.2. And it'll be interesting to see if there is a way to install DSM 7.3 to get around this drive requirement in order to update to DSM 7.3. And so you're not in this really weird environment where you have to have a Synology drive to be able to first update the OS so you can use non-Synology drives in there. Once again, I'm gonna to have to test all this stuff out and I will absolutely be doing a lot more follow-up videos in this. 7.3 also brings a really cool thing that I'm excited to see is full on tiering. So I'm gonna talk about this and definitely test it on out in DSM 7.3, but now you'll actually be able to do tiering of your files. This is kind of like an SSD cache on steroids and it's a much more of an active process. What this tiering does is it automatically moves files from HD storage to SSD storage based off of how often they're used, which is really great. Now, the one thing I am really interested to see is if this will work with BTRFS snapshots, and I'm not sure kind of how that container is gonna go. If they are doing it on the L LVM set side, it should be very easy to do with BTRFS still working but I'm still definitely going to have to test that on out. But tiering is really useful to have for, especially like your video production houses who want a really big space. And when projects haven't been used in a while, having them automatically kind of go into that HD colder storage that's still fast enough, but is not the expensive SSD space is gonna be really nice. So I'm absolutely excited to test that on out and all the other DSM 7.3 deployments. But for now, this is great news for everybody there. Stay tuned for more videos and let me know what you think down in the comments below. For everybody who is really looking at Ugreen and all those other third-party NAS manufacturers, is this enough to get you to switch back? Or do you really like Ugreen? Do you really like the UNAS Pro? And you're happy that you've switched? So definitely leave those down in the comments below and stay tuned for some more videos. All right, well, that's gonna be it for this. Have a good one, bye.